as soon as I take that out, okay, the bolt drops. So that's unlike the Centerfire AR15. From a semi-auto 22 Magnum, we have 0.3 of an inch for five shots at 50, so I am stoked about that. Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm checking out the Guncraft AR15 in 22 Magnum. First of all, I'll show you what it comes with. We've got a sheet of paper here, just with a uh, Allen key. We've got a sticker and a little bit of information at the bottom here, just saying that Guncraft recommends the use of a Gwila 40 grain Silver Eagle ammunition. We do not recommend the use of any 30 grain rounds. Uh, look, yes, I'll uh, test the 30 grain just to uh, confirm that today in this review. Now it also comes with a manual, so a very basic sort of manual, just covers the bare basics on using it um, and you know what the parts are with this rifle. So as you can see from the picture here, um, you know pretty much a mil spec AR-15. The only difference uh, being that it's chambered in 22 Magnum, so with that we've got a blowback action, so we don't have the hole in the upper receiver there or a gas tube, you know, coming from the barrel into a uh, gas block and back into the upper receiver, okay? This cycles via uh, blowback action. So I'll just go ahead and clear it here, take out the magazine, and you can see just how realistic this is. Now, keep in mind, I've put a whole heap of my own furniture on, and I'll run through all of this, you know, individually with you, but as you saw in the manual, the rifle comes pretty much bare bones, you know, as a uh, standard AR-15 would. You've just got that really basic uh, adjustable stock on it, you know, a terrible trigger, et cetera, et cetera. So I went through and changed, you know, a fair bit out on this, but obviously, you know, it's still going to function accuracy wise and cycling the way that it would straight out of the box, um, despite whatever furniture's on it. That's only just cosmetic differences there. So, okay. Let's run through uh, the furniture that I put on. So we'll start at the back here. So I've got the Daniel Defense adjustable stock. I've got the Strike Industries buffer tube, and I've got the Strike Industries uh, castle nut uh, and quick detach um, attachment there. We've also got the Strike Industries charging handle. So yes, there's a little bit of red on it. Just something a little bit different, guys. Um, you know, when you've got one of these, you certainly enjoy playing with it with different cosmetic appearances and just doing them up as you sort of are in the mood for. I've also got the uh, forward assist uh, from Strike Industries. Now this does function on the Guncraft rifle, so if you do have the bolt slightly back, you can operate that forward assist and it will push the bolt forward. The uh, rear takedown pin and the front takedown pin are also from Strike Industries. Uh, just an enhanced mag release also from Strike Industries. On the uh, pistol grip and the oversized trigger guard here, that's from Daniel Defense. Okay, I do like the look of the Daniel Defense stuff, so that's why I went that way uh, for this part. As for the trigger, we've got a Trigger Tech uh, Diamond. Now it's uh, a two-stage fully adjustable uh, trigger, so I've got it breaking nicely at two pounds. You can go lighter, but I'm happy just with the two pounds on this one. On top, we've got the uh, Aimpoint Comp M5 red dot, and I really like this, especially on ARs. I mean, it's, it's perfect. Quick, fast acquisition, and you know, this isn't the sort of rifle that I'm shooting long distance with, so I don't really need a scope as such. However, in saying that, in this review, what I'll do is I've got to find out what ammunition this rifle likes. So to do that, I'll throw on my loop hold. I've got it here just with an AR uh, mount, and it's just the uh, VX Freedom Rimfire scope. Now, this is only the uh, 2 to 7 by 33, so it's a nice compact scope, but we'll see how we go. I just want to be able to zero it 
um, and find out what sort of ammo it likes. And then I'll jump back to the red dot there, you know, for use for feral pest control. At the front here, I've got the Strike Industries uh, light rail. Now, I absolutely love these. Um, as you can see, like the Picatinny doesn't go all the way along. They've just machined it smooth here. So, you know, it's great for just gripping. But the best thing about it, and I know this is kind of going off on a little bit of a tangent, guys, but I do want to show you this, you know, because people who are running, you know, even straight pull ARs may really like this rail as well. To take it off, all you do is push down, lift up the lever, like so, and then you can just pull this straight off. That's how easy it attaches. So great for cleaning and everything. Um, I really, really like it. They're not, you know, very, very cheap. Um, they are reasonably expensive, but geez, they're worth it. I love it. Okay, at the front here, I got the uh, Wilson Combat uh, Flash Hider. I just thought that was a lot better than the standard A2 uh, one that comes, you know, with the Guncraft rifle. So there's been a fair few, you know, like upgrades cosmetically with this rifle. But, you know, it's like any AR-15. You're going to turn it into what you like with your preferences. So let's start with the actual barrel here, okay? We've got a uh, fairly heavy barrel. It's um, from uh, Sasson Engineering, which uh, supposedly uh, used to be border barrels in the UK. So it's a uh, 1 in 14 inch uh, twist, as I say, reasonably heavy profile there. And naturally we've got the half inch by 28 TPI thread at the end there. So you can add all your standard 223 AR-15 uh, muzzle devices. And you can get different barrel options, but I've got the 16 and a half inch barrel here. Overall weight of the rifle as you see it, even with the optic on it, um, is eight pounds on the dot. So 3.62 kilos. As I say, it does have a blowback uh, action there. The greatest thing about this, and I'm really looking forward to uh, you know, being able to uh, use it, is that you've got at the back here, the proper buffer spring and buffer in the buffer tube. Okay, even though it's a blowback design, um, it's unlike other ARs in rim fires where they just simply have the bolt coming back to about here and they've, they've got to stop. Uh, at the buffer tube. So this is completely different. This functions in that sense like a normal AR-15 where you've got that spring and buffer there. So it should have very much a realistic feel and sound to it. The upper and lower receiver is made from 7075. So if any of you know, uh, you know your different uh, alloys, like that is a very high grade aluminium and you can see it on this rifle. There is like zero, absolutely zero movement between the upper and lower. I'm really impressed with that straight out of the box. The one thing I did find though was um, uh, the takedown pins. Honestly, the ones from Guncraft, the tolerance on them was so tight that you couldn't even push it out by your finger. These ones from Strike Industries, yes, you can push them out with your finger. It's still reasonably tight and allows you know no movement whatsoever, but still allows you to be able to push them out because for me, I wanna be able to push out the rear takedown pin and be able to clean and access uh, this in the field. With the um, trigger on this, as I said, it's the uh, Trigger Tech Diamond, so a very high grade uh, trigger. It's compatible with standard AR triggers. You can see the placement here uh, of the uh, pins, it is just standard AR-15. So that opens up so many options to you with regards to triggers of your choice. Now, the magazine on this is just the standard um, Black Dog magazine, okay? You can get these in 10 rounds, which this is for category C here in Australia, or you can get it over that. I think they do make a 14 round one. So if you are in the UK, obviously you're laughing because you can have higher than 10 round capacity. Uh, Australia and New Zealand, um, it is a 10 round uh, limit there. Unless, of course, here in Australia, you uh, register the rifle as category D, then you can have over the 10 round magazines. Now, the rifle uh, is made in the UK. Um, obviously, in the UK, they can still have uh, ARs in uh, rim fires. So, you know, there's obviously a market there for it. But speaking of New Zealand, I got this one in via uh, Gun City in uh, Christchurch there in New Zealand and obviously they're legal over there. And I thought I really want to get a hold of one of these because for feral pest control, obviously the 22 Magnum has a lot better knockdown over a uh, standard 22 LR. So 
Um, I have to say it was an absolute pleasure dealing with them. Um, you know, all I had to do was provide my import permit as a primary producer and they took care of the uh, export for me, uh, shipped it over and uh, then I just got a local dealer to pick it up for me and uh, I had my PTA with them and then it was mine. So it was uh, a pretty straightforward process at the end of the day. However, um, in saying that, the price is fairly expensive. So this rifle is four and a half thousand New Zealand dollars or about four thousand Australian dollars. Then you've got to look at uh, shipping, which was about another $500. And then you get hit with import tariffs, which were another $1,200 on top of that. So we're looking at a, uh, a plus five grand rimfire AR-15 here. So look, I know this isn't going to be for everyone, but for those of you who are in the position like myself to import, and you want pretty much the best that's on the market at the time of doing this review. I think this rifle on paper with what it's made from and the quality, I think it's really up there. So look, uh, the test is going to be now guys getting out on the farm. I've got a few different ammos that I wanna test through it to see which one is the most accurate for the purpose of feral pest control. So let's get to it. All right guys, let's run you through the ammo that I'm going to uh, test in the Guncraft uh, rifle today. So the first one is a Remington 40 grain jacketed hollow point. Then I'm going to go to the Remington 40 grain pointed soft point. Then the CCI 40 grain jacketed hollow point. And then I've got some of the 46 grain CCI um, segmented hollow points. And then last of all, the heaviest ammunition that you can get for 22 Magnum being the 50 grain jacketed hollow points from Federal. So what I'm gonna do is I'll shoot five shot groups out there at 50, okay, of each ammunition. And then if it takes a liking to one or two ammos, um, I'll then take that out to 100 and see which one is suitable for the purpose of feral pest control here on the farm. What I'll probably do then guys, is I've got my uh, aim point comp M5. And I do like that for feral pest control because you know it's just so quick with that target acquisition and so forth. So I will most likely once I work out which ammunition shoots the most accurately is I'll zero it using the uh, red dot from there and um, you know and then it'll be ready for feral pest control here on the farm so let's get to it i'm really excited uh, to pull the trigger on this one pardon the pun but uh, yeah i can't wait to see the results so let's get into it okay well not a good start. Let's have a look what's going on here. All right, let's have a look at the groups here at 50. We started off with the Remington, the 40 grain jacketed hollow points, and that's neatly into a beautiful half inch. We come down to the Remington 40 grain pointed soft points, and I thought we'd have about the same there, but believe it or not, it's uh, blown out to roughly about 1.1 inches. 
But then we come up to the CCI with the 40 grain jacketed hollow points. I mean, look at that. I can't be any happier than that. From a semi-auto 22 Magnum, we have 0.3 of an inch for five shots at 50. So I am stoked about that. Then we come up to the 46 grain CCI and yeah, that, that blew right out. And I haven't had any luck with this ammo, even in the uh, bolt actions that I've tried it in. So we're going to be about 1.9 inches. So yeah, unfortunately that didn't perform at all, which in one way, guys, I'm kind of happy because it's very expensive to buy that ammo. So yeah, I'm probably uh, happy that the cheaper ammo is performing. Then down to the uh, Federal uh, 50 grain uh, jacketed hollow points. I really thought we'd do a bit better than that with them. I mean, some of my 22 Magnums love it, but in this case, it's come out at an inch. So look, the clear winner is the CCI. I mean, that's just absolutely amazing. Uh, what I'll do though, let's go out to 100. I just want to try the CCI against the uh, Remington 40 grain jacketed hollow points and just see how we go. Okay, so having a look at the groups here at 100. Now, keep in mind, I am on seven power, guys, so a little bit of guesswork in it. But uh, we've come in at under two inches, so we're at 1.8 inches for the Remington. But the CCI, once again at 100, has outperformed the Remington. It's got the edge there at about 1.1 inches. So definitely the CCI is what I'm going to uh, zero this rifle for. All right, guys, so I've got uh, Hornady 30 grain VMAX here. I just want to cycle it just to, I guess, test it for my own satisfaction that it does require that heavier grain ammunition. Okay, yep, so jams straight up. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I won't waste any more ammo with that. Um, that was just to prove that what they do say, you do require that heavier grain ammunition to cycle correctly in this rifle. So loading the magazine on this is pretty straightforward. You just push down and push it then to the rear under the lip and it holds in place nicely. Now I have had a couple of hiccups um, with some ammunition. But uh, whether that's just teething problems or what, that was with uh, the Remington ammunition. And obviously with the 30 grain VMAX not cycling, but that's more of the weight of the projectile issue rather than the actual um, magazine problem. So yeah, overall, not too bad, but uh, you know, Black Dog magazines aren't exactly the most expensive that you can get. They are very affordable, so it is what it is. Okay, so I've got 10 rounds of the CCI 40 grain jacketed hollow points here. I've put the uh, aim point comp M5 back on and I've got that zeroed. So now I just want to do a cycle test to make sure we've got absolutely no jams when we're shooting a bit quicker. And look at that, no problem at all. I really, really like this rifle. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap up my final thoughts on the Guncraft AR-15 in 22 Magnum. Now you can see by the look on my face, I genuinely just love this rifle. The accuracy on it is uh, more than what I expected to be quite honest. Having 0.3 of an inch for five shots using that CCI 40 grain jacketed hollow point there at 50, outstanding. That's uh, more than what I require for my purpose of feral pest control here on the farm. So uh, let's talk about a few things that I really like about it apart from the accuracy. Seriously, if you're used to or have had any experience with shooting an AR-15 in 223, this feels so similar, it's unbelievable because we've got that 
uh, buffer tube, the buffer, and spring. So when you're firing it, you hear and you feel that bolt come back and cycle with that spring and buffer in the buffer tube. So it's definitely got that same feel as like the 223. Just a slight little bit difference in the recoil naturally. So that I really love about it. The fact that you can use aftermarket triggers, everything's mil spec on it, put you know four ends on of your choice, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I love that. You know, the AR15 is just an awesome platform that you can set up for your needs, whether it be, you know, like more of a precision long range setup or you know a close quarter setup. You can just do everything with the AR15. I really love the uh, platform in general. Now, as for this rifle, the one thing I don't like, we have the uh, uh, the bolt catch. Okay, so it works not like a normal AR would. So in other words, when the last round hold open um, feature is enabled like now, okay, so you're firing, firing, last round, bang. Okay, what's actually stopping it from going forward is the follower of the magazine. So as soon as I take that out, okay, the bolt drops. So that's unlike the Centerfire AR-15. Now the reason for that is not so much the fault of the firearm, but it's the rimfire magazine, okay? Now, when I had the uh, Chris Defiance, it had the last round hold open feature like a normal AR. And that's because with their mags, they had a little bit of plastic that would come up the back uh, with the follower and engage the uh, bolt catch as like a normal AR-15 centerfire would. So I'd love to see that being made, you know, in the magazine for the 22 Magnum because that would just finish off this rifle perfectly in my view. Now, uh, what else can I say about it, guys? Um, okay, so obviously it doesn't like to cycle the lighter 30 grain ammunition, you know, as I showed you there. For me, that's not really a problem because this is for feral pest control. I want something that I can chase wild dogs, feral pigs with, and you know, my preference is definitely 40 grain or above in uh, that projectile weight. So, you know, that's not an issue for me. However, if you're in other countries or other areas, you may want something uh, that you can use those lighter loads with, but this wouldn't be the rifle for that. Okay, uh, apart from all of that, we did have uh, some cycling issues with the Remington ammunition. Um, I did get a couple of stove pipes and it was just now and then, I don't know why exactly, I've got to put a little bit more time into the rifle to be able to determine what's going on there. But look guys, you know what, I call it the way it is and I show you the good with the bad, even though I absolutely love this rifle. So guys, I'll um, wrap it up there. A final shout out to the guys at uh, Gun City in um, New Zealand for organizing this. I mean, just thank you very much for it. Um, you know, you phone those guys up and look guys, they didn't know who I was. I just phoned them up, paid for the rifle, organized the import, and they were only too happy to uh, sort me out with uh, getting this rifle imported here to Australia. So um, yeah, it ended up being very expensive and that's tariffs and everything else that you get hit with. But in my view, this is the ultimate AR-15 rimfire you can possibly get. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. All right, guys, we'll leave the review at that. I hope you really enjoyed watching it. So till next time, we'll catch you then.